a heart attack, a tumor, a car accident, an accidental fall, an alcoholic coma are just some of the causes that every day mark the end of numerous lives, each with its own story. Stories made of interrupted dreams, lost loves, broken bonds, lives that stop abruptly, leaving behind an unbridgeable void. All these stories, although different in detail, share a common destiny. When the hands of that great clock that we call life stop, the body undergoes an inevitable series of biological transformations, which although disturbing, are part of a natural cycle that unites every human being. Cadaveric phenomena are divided into abiotic or negative phenomena, divided in turn into immediate and consecutive, and biotic or positive phenomena, divided into destructive or special. In this first part of the video, we will look in detail at what happens to the human body in the 24 hours following death, starting from the immediate and consecutive abiotic phenomena. Phase 1. Immediate Abiotic Phenomena Cessation of Vital Functions Death is defined as the total and irreversible loss of all vital functions of an organism and from a strictly medical point of view corresponds to specific cardiological, respiratory and neurological criteria. Breathing stops completely, the cardiovascular system stops working and the heart stops, thus interrupting the circulation of blood and therefore the flow of oxygen and essential nutrients to the organs and tissues of the entire body. This state marks the beginning of clinical death. The brain, more precisely the brainstem, thus permanently interrupts any type of activity. The total absence of consciousness, brainstem reflexes, and brain electrical activity determines brain death. At this point, a series of cadaveric phenomena occur that are nothing more than the result of complex physical, chemical, and environmental processes, and although they follow a precise temporal sequence, they are influenced by both internal and external factors to the corpse. Some of these are the sex and age of the deceased patient, body mass, and anti-mortem medical conditions, as well as the environmental temperature and geographical position where the body is found but also the clothes worn and the possible presence of insects or other animals that can accelerate or slow down the decomposition process. Phase 2 Consecutive Abiotic Phenomena Pallor Mortis Shortly after death, usually within 15 to 30 minutes, a visible change in the skin of the body will be noted, as it will take on a dull and pale color. This is a cadaveric phenomenon known as pallor mortis and is due to the interruption of blood circulation and therefore of the transport of oxygenated blood to the tissues. In the meantime, the corneas become opaque, corneal and pupillary reflexes are lost, and the eyeball sags due to the evaporation of ocular fluids. Phase 3. Algor mortis. At the time of death, the average body temperature is around 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. One of the first post-mortem changes that appear is algor mortis, a Latin expression for cadaveric cooling, and occurs immediately after death, following the interruption of blood circulation. Algor mortis is mainly due to the loss of homeostatic regulation by the hypothalamus an important structure of the brain, considered the control center of body temperature, a sort of internal thermostat. The interruption of metabolic processes contributes to the arrest of heat production, thus causing a progressive reduction in body temperature, until the body has reached thermal equilibrium with the surrounding environment. The rate at which cooling occurs depends on a number of factors, and in particular on the difference in temperature between that of the body and that of the environment in which it is located. But as a general rule, it cools at a rate of about 1 degree per hour during the first 12 hours after death. This rate accelerates in a body immersed in water, in a body without clothing, 
and in a thin body, which has less fat to insulate the body and loses heat more rapidly. Phase 4 Liver Mortis Liver mortis, or cadaveric hypostasis, is another of the cadaveric phenomena that manifest themselves within a few hours of death, with the first visual signs that can appear as early as 30 minutes after death. Cardiovascular collapse and the arrest of the heartbeat interrupt the circulation of blood, which is no longer pumped into the blood vessels, will begin to flow into the lower parts of the body due to the force of gravity. It will then begin to accumulate in the areas of the body that remain in contact with the surface on which the body lies, causing the appearance of red-purple or bluish spots on the skin. In the initial phase of liver mortis, the hypostatic spots take on a reddish color, as the blood has not yet completely exhausted its oxygen content, so the hemoglobin present inside the red blood cells retains its bright red color. As time passes, the oxygen bound to the hemoglobin, also known as oxyhemoglobin, detaches, thus leaving the hemoglobin in its deoxygenated form, called deoxyhemoglobin. At this point, the hypostatic spots will take on a bluish-purple color. However, in the hours following death, the fixation of liver mortis has not yet occurred because the blood deposited at the bottom of the blood vessels is still liquid. Therefore, by exerting any pressure on the hypostatic stains, for example by moving the body or simply by pressing a finger against the skin, a skin whitening would occur. This is because the pressure applied forces the blood leaking from the capillaries to move away from the compressed area. After about six to eight hours from death, the fixation of liver mortis occurs and is attributed to blood coagulation and hemolysis. That is, the breaking of red blood cells with consequent release of the hemoglobin contained within them, favored by the progressive destruction of blood vessels. At this point, the hypostatic stains will become fixed, so they will not be affected by pressure or body movements. Phase 5 Rigor Mortis At the moment of death, what is called primary flaccidity occurs. That is a phase in which all the muscles of the body relax completely. This is because the cessation of the activity of the central nervous system suspends the transmission of nerve impulses necessary for maintaining muscle tone. After one to two hours from death, rigor mortis occurs and indicates the stiffening of the corpse's muscles due to chemical changes in their myofibrils, the functional units of the muscle. Rigor mortis results from the exhaustion of ATP reserves, also known as adenosine triphosphate, the reference energy molecule for all cellular processes that require energy and is responsible for muscle contraction and relaxation. The lack of ATP prevents the separation of actin and myosin filaments, the two most important proteins present in muscles, which thus bind irreversibly, forming actomyosin. The consequence will be a stiffening of voluntary and involuntary muscles, which will reach its maximum intensity after about 8-12 hours from death. Rigor mortis occurs simultaneously throughout the body's muscle tissue, but the size of the muscle determines the intensity and speed with which the stiffening process occurs, and consequently, the perceptibility of the changes from the outside. In the initial stages, Rigor mortis usually begins in the smaller and thinner muscles, such as those of the jaw, eyelids, and face, and then extends to the muscles of the neck and upper limbs, chest, and back, and finally to the muscles of the lower limbs. Once rigor mortis has fully developed, the joints of the body will remain fixed in the position in which they are found. After 24 to 48 hours, rigor mortis begins to disappear, because with the onset of putrefactive processes, digestive enzymes and bacteria begin to decompose muscle tissue, gradually breaking the bonds between actin and myosin filaments. 
This leads to a relaxation of the muscles that decrees the end of rigor mortis in its own order of appearance and the beginning of what is called secondary flaccidity. At this point, the so-called late postmortem changes will begin, which include destructive transformative phenomena. In the next video, which you will find by clicking here above as soon as it is available, we will see them in detail. We will then follow the process of decomposition and the further changes that occur within the human body in the days and weeks following death.